IBM. We've got a couple pieces of news on IBM this week. Um, but, you know, quietly, IBM is a very big influencer in the semiconductor space. People don't always notice that because it isn't one of the, the common names, the Intel, AMD, NVIDIA, Qualcomm's that tend to get called out a lot. But on a research, from a research standpoint, the company's been doing some really interesting things. It had a pretty big breakthrough this week. Pat, I'll let you start that one up. Yeah, so IBM is a huge player in semiconductors. Uh, they license their uh, IP to both Intel and Samsung and likely some other unnamed people who want uh, that to be confidential. Uh, when I was at uh, AMD, uh, we were licensing a ton of IP from, from IBM when we, uh, when we had our, our own fabs. And this big announcement was the first two nanometer uh, nanosheet uh, device. Uh, that, that was announced. And so first of all, uh, for those who aren't uh, chip-licious uh, people and don't love chippery, uh, essentially um, the smaller the geometry or the nanometer, the lower the power uh, or the higher the performance, uh, you, you pick one or the other uh, or a combination both is, is what you get. So you want your smartphone to last longer, uh, go uh, to two nanometer. Uh, you want to have higher performance at the same uh, wattage, uh, you go a lower nanometer. And then there's this thing uh, called uh, nanosheets, and nanosheets are basically made of uh, graphene, and it's a different type of insulator uh, that goes on there. It's been tested down to one nanometer uh, so far, but these devices are, are two nanometers. So two big impacts here. Uh, first is that um, IBM will be able to license this technology to both Samsung and Intel uh, and others who wish to be uh, uh, not named. And secondly, they can use them in, in their own products, uh, their uh, power and also uh, Z. But uh, it's very, very cool. Uh, IBM's talking about 45% uh, higher performance, as I said, or 75% lower energy use than compared to the current seven nanometer node. So pretty awesome stuff. This is a really interesting one for me, Pat. Uh, you know, we, we've been watching this industry very close. And just a few weeks ago, Intel made some announcements at their, you know, ID of two event. And one of their four big announcements was about the partnership the company has with IBM Research. Uh, which, by the way, kind of was quiet because when you talk about building new new foundry, new foundry service, new fabs, um, major investments, sometimes those kinds of parts of the announcements can kind of go under the radar. But let's not let's not forget to share with the market. I mean, IBM had some very leading uh, edge type of, of of breakthroughs with seven and five was very early to the game there, and people, like I said, don't remember that because. We think about TSM at the leading edge, mostly uh, already talking about three nanometer. We think about what Intel is doing. The other thing, though, Pat, that is really interesting and I think warrants some discussion. I'd love to get your take on this because we haven't actually talked about it yet. But how IBM monetizes and commercializes this, these breakthroughs. So up to this point, you know, of course, uh, IBM has their Z the mainframes and has power and some of their, um, you know, compute that they run on their Linux kernel. Uh, that they use their chips for. But largely, IBM has not really been front and center in terms of taking this technology and, and scaling it to market, putting it in foundries, having it used in a lot of different designs, or having at least notoriety for its use in a lot of different designs. Do you think this two nanometer breakthrough is an opportunity, um, whether it's on the mobile side with someone like a Samsung, like a partnership, whether it's with Intel, to commercialize and, and further help the market see a growth opportunity for IBM for its semiconductor success research and its ability to get to market early in terms of the research and development side. Yeah, I mean, Daniel, they've been doing this for 25 years. It's just been under the radar. Now, it made a lot more sense when they had their own fabs, right? And they actually technically do have a test fab still uh, for some of the um, uh, photonic stuff. But um, they've been doing this uh, for uh, forever. It's super high margin. Uh, it's not, I don't think it's revenue that, that would essentially, you know, uh, swing anybody around the room, but I just, I'm, I'm continually amazed at how ahead of the curve they are. And it really, the, the Intel uh, announcement was breakthrough, Daniel, because 
Intel uh, for 25 years uh, did it alone, right? And, and it's nice to see them uh, working with IBM. And I think what we saw in terms of overall Intel IDM 2.0, uh, Intel realized it can't go at it alone, right? Uh, it needs fab, uh, uh, more fab partners. It needs more tech partners to, to make that happen. And I don't see that as a weakness. I see that as a, a pragmatic, uh, good uh, decision. Yeah, I mean, I feel completely the same way. I think it's just an opportunity, right? IBM breaks through on a lot of technologies, but doesn't always commercialize them as well as, as they could. You can think about Quantum, think about Watson, and think about now all the leading leadership that it's had in chips over the years. Is there a different go-to-market approach, especially now that they're uh, spinning off Kindrel, their IIT managed services and focusing more of course, on the hybrid cloud business, but this is a huge business opportunity. And to be at the leading edge and to be early with these technologies, there's a possible bigger monetization opportunity that probably warrants some thought. Um, and I'm sure IBM is doing it. It's a massive company. I'm sure they're looking at this and thinking about it. But Pat, it, you know, it would be remiss of us as analysts to not at least look at the opportunity and say, hey, could IBM take this to market in a way where they A, get more credit and B, drive more revenue beyond what they're doing in, in in their current business today. 